today's video we're going to be replacing all eight injectors on this L98 uh, engine inside this 86 Corvette. Hey folks, this is Mr. G and welcome to Just Corvette Crazy. On this channel we talk about Corvettes, we fix some Corvettes, and we love to drive our Corvettes. So if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel out a lot. Thanks. Here's what's going to happen. First thing you want to do is you want to go to the fuse panel and you want to pull out. There's a 10 amp fuse on the lower right hand side of the fuse panel. In up there is where the fuse panel is. And I have just yanked the 10 amp fuse which is in the lower right hand side of the fuse panel and that is for the fuel pump crank it over a few times with the fuse out so therefore we are purging the pressure from that fuel line and therefore you know the fuel rails <laughs> So here we are sitting uh, on top of the engine and uh, just give you an idea of what we're going to be doing. I'm not going to go through the whole process as I do it just because it's going to take too long. But first of all what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove uh, the snorkel part here. Um, so real simple, you're going to remove a couple of clips, remove this clamp and take this piece out, out of the way just so that it frees up. I'm going to be removing the throttle linkages, okay, so off of the plenum, so those two uh, screws are here. Remove that. So first of all, we have to disconnect the throttle cables. Remove that kind of stuff, just kind of slide it out of the way. And then once that's out of the way, there's a couple of connectors over here for the throttle body. Remove those. And then there are two... Uh, coolant lines, one over on the passenger side and one over here underneath on the driver's side that go into the throttle body. A lot of people, as a modification to this, they will bypass that uh, so that fuel or so that coolant, sorry, doesn't go through um, and heat up your air mixture as it's going through into the engine. At this point in time, I'm not going to do that with this engine. Um, we're going to try and keep things as uh, close to stock as we can for now. And then I will start to remove the screws to loosen off these runners. So there's screws on the top of each side, there's screws on the bottom of each side. And there are also screws on the inside. There are two. There's one that you have to get coming in this way over onto here and then there's one that you have to get this way going over onto that side. So I'm going to get those out of the way as well and then remove the plenum and once the plenum is out then we can back off um, as much of the, um, of the runners as possible. Normally I take one side of the runners completely off, get them out of the way and then we can tackle the fuel rail and the fuel rail has four bolts plus the fuel lines and uh, we'll take care of that as it goes. So I'm going to stop the camera but I will come back uh, as I get things done just to show you what it looks like. Removed the plenum. So that's the plenum with the throttle body attached. Okay, so I've removed the plenum. So what we've got now, the runners, okay, they're slightly loose enough to get the plenum out. A couple of things. Underneath the plenum, there's an electrical connection. Okay, um, and then there are these two vacuum lines that are coming in on the side. There's a hard line that's coming in at the back of the plenum. So that's 5 eighths to remove that. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen off these runners a bit more so that I can actually get the fuel rail 
out. So now we can at least see the fuel rail. And uh, in order to do that, what I need to do is there is um, there's four bolts holding the fuel rail in. Plus you've got some hard lines up at the front. So your fuel lines are coming in up at the front. They have to be disconnected. Okay. And then the fuel rail will pop out. But in order to get that to pop out, these runners need to be a little bit uh, more clear. You'll notice that there are two, let me melt this, this, there are two bolts here holding the runner from the inside. So this one we have to get from this side, like that, off onto that runner. And then there's another one on this side that you have to get underneath, and it is here. So in order to remove the runners on the bottoms, there are two hidden bolts. One is on this side. You have to get it from underneath in front of the distributor. And the second is you come in on this side and you get it here. So once I do that, the runner shall be uh, quite a bit loose and I can pull them off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these gaskets so that they don't get damaged and I can reuse them. So there's one there. And hopefully this one comes out nice and clean too. So that they don't get damaged. And I don't have to order new ones. There we go. One and two. So I'm going to get uh, going on loosening this stuff off. And then uh, again remove the fuel lines, the hard lines on the fuel rail. Alright, so I have got the runners now completely loose, and uh, what I'm going to do now is remove um, the hard lines uh, for the fuel rails, and then these four bolts that hold the fuel rail in place, and then this fuel rail uh, with a little tug should be able to pop up, and then I could move the runner slightly out of the way as I uh, bring the fuel rail all the way out. So the next thing to do is to get rid of these fuel lines uh, and to make sure that everything is free so that we can go ahead and easily remove the um, fuel rail. We will need to disconnect the existing uh, injector uh, eight injector wires so that we can free up once we get ready to pull that uh, fuel rail out. So next thing is those fuel lines. All right so the fuel rail is uh, almost out. Now I forgot to mention and I forgot all about it myself that there is a half inch bolt at the front of the engine holding the hard gas lines uh, on a bracket so that has to come off and then a good tug on the fuel rail will pop out those injectors and you should be free to go and like I was hoping there was no fuel spill there was no uh, high pressured fuel left anywhere in the uh, in the fuel rails, so there was no spraying. So with a little manipulation, and away we go. And out comes the fuel rail. So that's the fuel rail there. Okay, with the eight injectors. There are these little clips. So this one here is nice and easy to see. There are these little clips, and basically what you want to do is you want to take the clip, you'll see this little pin part here on the clip, and you're going to slide the clip, kind of rotate it around, and what it does is it hopefully frees up. Let me try one here. There, this one might be good. So basically rotate this clip around. And sometimes they're a little tricky, 
but once you rotate it around the injector should pop up no nothing ever happens the way it should there we go so these little c clips here basically go in and lock the injector into place so the eight injectors new injectors are in the fuel rail uh, so what i'm going to do is move over and put this onto the car start to button this all back up again uh, first thing i'm going to do is line up all of the injectors sit the uh, fuel rail down thread in some of these bolts i've got to put this uh, half inch bolt back on the front i did the fuel lines already and then i'll get it all set up so that I can drop the plenum in. But before I do that, there was one uh, line here. So one vacuum line that goes back into there. So I'm gonna do that while this is still all loose. But then I'll come back and see how we're doing. All right. So here's what I've done so far. Um, I have put everything back together, ready for the plenum. I have left this side a little loose. This side needs a little tightening up afterwards as well, but not as bad. Um, I'm going to tighten this again. You've got, remember these two strange positioned screws, one on each side. And they're hard to get at. So you want to make sure that you get those good. And, grab my... and then what's next is we're going to slide the plenum in and then start tightening things up. But what I did is I put the fuse back in for the fuel pump, turned the ignition to the run position uh, so that the fuel pump would run power putting some pressure into my fuel rail and then I checked for leaks and I did not see any which is a good sign so now it's a matter of putting the plenum back in place putting all of the hoses and wiring back and then seeing if she'll start up so uh, once I get everything back I'll come back to you well, folks, there she is. She's all buttoned back up again. Let's uh, fire it up, but first I'm going to get the fire extinguisher just in case we end up with a fuel leak. Um, we've got to make sure that we're all covered. So, um, yeah, grab a fire extinguisher and then we will get fired up. Hold on. So, fingers crossed. And we'll see if she fires up for us with the new injectors in place. seems to be good there's no fuel leaks that I can see anywhere but we still have lots of work to do on this old girl so uh, hit the subscribe button if you like what you saw and uh, watch for further videos here on just Corvette crazy take care <laughs>